See, today we are going to talk on blurring lines between metabolic disorders with cardiology and fundamentally cardiometabolic cardiovascular disorders, the old wine in new bottle. So fundamentally, it is nothing but cardiometabolic based chronic disease and metabolic flexibility and how the modern cardiodiabetology are married to each other. And it is nothing but this common soil hypothesis. So first we will define the burden. Then we look at the critical and crucial link between glucose control and cardiovascular risk. Then we look at non-glycemic factors and cardiovascular risk. Then we will combine the two or the cardiometabolic chronic disease model with meta inflexibility, connecting the dot. And then we look at newer treatment strategies and newer research to reduce cardiometabolic risk and cardiovascular risk. So when we define the burden of cardiometabolic based chronic disease, we know that cardiovascular disease is a very significant global burden, whether it is heart attack or stroke. And we all know that it is killing Indians in a very, very big way. And we all know that the clock starts ticking at birth. We know whether it is coronary artery disease. By the time overt coronary artery disease develops and diabetes develops, the clock often starts clicking in the first and second decade of somebody's life. So Professor Jeffrey Mechanic, my good friend from Mount Sinai, who is in Professor Valentine Fuster's group in the cardiometabolic program at Mount Sinai. So here you have an endocrinologist working with the leading cardiologists. The cardiometabolic based chronic disease and its metabolic drivers. We know that we need to have a population based strategy which warrants an early and sustained interventions which can control the metabolic drivers including functional adiposity, dysglycemia, and hypertension. That's really the key. So what is cardiometabolic-based chronic disease? Is nothing but ABCD and DBCD. ABCD means the adiposity-based chronic disease, which has two parts, adiposity-based reflection of mass function of adipose tissue, and chronic disease, which reflects risk, presence, and severity of complications. DBCD reflects... Dysglycemia brace chronic disease. It's an overarching term including all forms of diabetes, type 2, pre-diabetes, and insulin resistance associated with the risk of disease progression. And when you combine ABCD, adiposity-based chronic disease, and DBCD, dysglycemia-based chronic disease, you get a cardiometabolic-based model of chronic disease, which is a medically actionable model, which addresses the underlying pathophysiology and the interrelationships and intersections between obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. That's the overarching thing. And it outlines a comprehensive approach for primary, primordial, secondary, and tertiary prevention of cardiovascular disease as the end stage development of a chronic disease process. And that is where the lines between metabolism and heart get blurred. And we have nothing but old wine in new bottle as illustrated here. So clearly we know that there are different stages of these models. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4. The at-risk model has genome, environment, and behavior in the ABCD component. The DBCD component has beta cell dysfunction and insulin resistance. And CMBCD model has dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome traits, and hypertension. In the pre disease state, it's all about abnormal distribution and kinetics of overweight and abnormal function of adipocytes. And then in the disease state, it's all about obesity, anthropometric, oxological, and biochemical thresholds, ultimately leading to the cardiometabolic and biomechanical complications of obesity, the macro and microvascular diseases of diabetes, and of course, then unveils the whole symptomatic coronary artery disease, heart failure, atrial fibrillation from asymptomatic heart disease. So clearly we know that the CMBCD or the cardiometabolic based chronic disease is a reflection of beta cell defect and insulin resistance, which is contributed tremendously by gluco and lipotoxicity. Now does glucose control matter in this risk process? We have excellent data with these elegant trials published more than a decade back of UK PDS three decades Accord, advanced, that microvascular complications with good glycemic control comes down. No impact on cardiovascular disease and actually mortality, again, no impact. Clearly, 
In long term follow up, however, with UKPDS, we found mortality came down. And if you do try glycemic control very tight, very late, then in accord, we saw increase in mortality. Are there non glycemic factors in cardiovascular risk? Yes. Despite of decades of improvements in type 2 diabetes, people are still not reaching to the goal, whether it is the blood pressure goal, the A1C goal, or the LDL goal. And we know that 82% don't achieve the A1C blood pressure or the cholesterol goal. And that's really something which we are worried about. The look high trial showed us very clearly that if you aggressively do intensive lifestyle, with weight loss, it did not improve the cardiovascular risk in type 2 diabetes in long terms. And weight loss, of course, happened very, very aggressively. But we know that the non-HDL cholesterol is a better marker for cardiovascular risk in addition to LDL cholesterol. And we know that it is the mitochondria, which is the root cause of all the problems in the thin fat type 2 diabetes, cardiometabolic disease-based chronic disease. So insulin resistance leads to mitochondrial dysfunction which leads to endothelial dysfunction, cardiac steatosis, and hypoglycemia. So it is the metabolic inflexibility and the ability of the mitochondrial capacity to switch between oxidative fuels, depending on the nutritional context, is lost either in obesity or type 2 diabetes. And that triggers this inflexibility in the mitochondria is where the marriage, the mitochondria is the place where the diabetes marries heart disease. And that switch ability of the mitochondria to switch between fuels when there is obesity or type 2 diabetes leads to heart disease and that's really the key. So when there is mitochondrial dysfunction, it interferes with oxidation of fatty alkyl CoA, it accumulates the intracellular lipids and diacyl glycerols, it activates the serine kinase, it interferes with the insulin receptor signaling and the GLUT4 translocation is interrupted. And this metabolic inflexibility, this mitochondrial dysfunction leads to citrate excess and beta oxidation, insulin resistance and endothelial dysfunction, ATP depletion, which leads to a trio of dysglycemia, dyslipidemia, and hypertension, which kills through coronary artery disease. And we have very good epigenomic data, which has been seen in different studies, including Indian studies on insulin resistance, clearly showing that mitochondrial dysfunction induces these challenges on the DNA methylation and insulin sensitivity, particularly in the overweight subjects, and we clearly know that this can impact in a huge way. And there is an unmet need for an ideal drug, which will correct both chronic-based metabolic diseases and metabolic inflexibility. So that's something which we recognize. We have metformin and glitazone, which correct insulin resistance. But we have no drug which can correct the respiratory chain transporters on the mitochondria-related glucotoxicity or the impaired insulin signaling. And that's an unmet need which we need to correct. And that's something which we need to do. So obviously, when we are connecting the loop from flexibility to inflexibility, from rapid power efficiency to glucose sparing efficiency and rapid energy abundant glucose, we need metabolic modulators. So obviously, we now know that making a point of the blurring of cardiology and diabetology, the cardiometabolic based chronic disease is here to stay. It's an early sustained evidence-based comprehensive integrated approach to target metabolic disorders involving subclinical adiposity and dysglycemia or type 2 diabetes. If you do multiple risk factor interventions, early, hit hard, hit early, it can delay or halt the progression of cardiovascular disease. But there will still be something which will delay or defer the residual risk. We know there are Indian clusters which significantly impact the cardiometabolic based chronic disease or type 2 diabetes. And they are mitochondrial or metabolic modulators. We are getting and emerging newer and newer tar therapies targeting energy kinetics or mitochondrial health, which may correct glucose and heart both simultaneously. Thank you for a patient hearing, for opportunity for this unique topic.